Here we go. Well, again, another one. Another one. Oh, keep coming every week, these, don't they? Every, every week. week. Every week they're coming. Not every week. Well, yeah, every week. Every week. Every week. Um, every week. Ah. Look, ca- that is a catchphrase now. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's happening now, isn't it? It is, it's whether they like it or not. Yeah. We are Dan and Mike from Bicycles of Manor. There you go. And uh, we're here to help you with your online fitness business. Mm. Yep. Just by going through what we've done, hopefully, and kind of noticing, you know, helping you with things that we're noticing, we're seeing, we're helping our coaches with, you know, all different in their own way. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully there'll be something in here that you find useful. And, uh, and if there is, you can join our members group where you can get access to our one-to-one live calls that happen every week. Yeah, there you go. What, well, every week? <laughs> every week. Not every week. Yeah, every week. What, every week? Every week. Every week. Okay, um, every week. £49. Pound. 49 quid for access to me and him. I mean, that's not the that's not the perk. Every week, the perk is the one to one calls. Okay, we okay. do with our coaches. You have access to them. You can ask us questions. And those are every week. Um, they are every week. So yeah, uh, I hope loads of people are, are listening. Uh, and if you are, share it with everybody. And also, a lot of you will know that I gave away my Range Rover, and I've started being more economical and got a bike. Uh, and now I drink Huel, who I'm definitely not sponsored by. Um, to post about Huel and the chains that you got on as well. Are they and really the good and cheap. Get them. Get them as well. Yeah. Uh, Why not? Just, just saying. Um, but anyway, Stephen Bartlett there. For anyone who doesn't know, for anyone that doesn't um, know, probably don't know. But yeah, today, well, we're bigger than Stephen Bartlett, though, aren't we? Huh? we're bigger than Stephen Bartlett. Are we? I think so. Yeah, yeah probably. Maybe we'll get him on. Yeah, no, if we get time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't think I want him on. You talk about Huel all the time. We don't really like Huel. Oh, Huel, oh, oh, you, know. you know. I do you like, know. I do like the salt caramel flavour. That is the best one. And I'm his favourite, though, apparently. Yeah, so, apparently. Yeah. I've had the chocolate one. No, I, um, I did. Uh, I did get it uh, because of the podcast. Actually, so I was influenced. It works then. It does. It does work. It's too thick. I might like him. Mm. It was too thick. It was like drinking fucking sludge. Mm. Genuinely. Well, there you go. There's a bit of feedback for you, Hugh. There you go. If you're listening, they are listening because they're watching. Yeah, Hugh. Cool. They're scouting the talent. Aren't they? They, <laughs> they, they, know, they, yeah. they know. Yeah, um, yeah, so today, know. Mike wants to talk about <laughs> how we formed Biceps and Banter. What every week? No. Just this week. Just this week, yeah. yeah. How we formed Biceps and Banter, how it came to be, what it is, what it isn't. Yeah. Maybe where we started off, you know, all that jazz. People are interested in this sort of shit for some reason. The more um, clickbait uh, title, which might go on, on YouTube, will be how we formed a multi-six-figure uh, company. Because uh, that sounds more clickbait But he hates it. I, I don't like it either. But I think you, you kind of have to play the game. You do I do, I do think you have bit. to play the game. Because we whinge at, at, at coaches not playing the game on Instagram and True. going, come on, you need to play the game. Whether you like it or not, this is what's happening. True. Like, you need to do that for that. And we go, well, we don't like being too flashy and stuff like that. Do you think people know, though? I don't know. And put it in the comments if you, if you think we don't need to say that because you would assume that. That's my question is, like, would you know? Like, I don't feel like... I don't feel like you can be in a position to talk about this sort of stuff unless you have done that. Yeah, but, but then there are people who do talk about it who aren't. Then. So and, I get it. And, and that, look, I, I get that because there is me, there is almost like, I understand that, let's just say you're a coach and you're a walking billboard mm. as such. You've got to be in shape to be a coach type thing. Yeah. And it, I do think it goes the other way, like to some extent. Not so that you're being an absolute bellend and flashing it everywhere. I don't think that's the case. But I, I, do, I do think that we have to play the game a little bit and be a little bit clickbaity with some of it because, well, it's, it's true. So it's true, it is. But I, I, my my thing with it is that if pe- people know in us and how we do things and the way we go about it, they will know. They will know that we're always torn with this, so aren't we? Yeah, it's it's a hard, it's a hard one. But I mean, I'd let, like to know people's opinion watching. Yeah, let us know below, like whether they think it it detracts from it, whether it's that's one of the reasons they follow us because we don't talk about it, or if they would want to know that sort of stuff because it. Again, my assumption is, well, people would assume that. Um, you know, but then again, I assume it of other mentors and we know that aren't doing as well or whatever. But that's not what we're about, is we're about, well, this is just good fundamentals that will take you from wherever you are to those numbers regardless. Um, and I don't think we would, we would, as people with good values, feel comfortable talking about this unless that had already happened. And people who know mm. us will know that. And they so we, therefore we don't need to say it. Mm. But that's just, yeah, hey. Let us know. But again, like you said, if you're going to go bigger, though, people who don't know you, they don't know you're like that and they don't know that they're your morals. I could just buy a watch on finance, though. Do that, please. And then it makes finance. it easier for everyone, doesn't it? Yeah, though? yeah. Then, and then I can just put it in every shop. I probably need to rent so. some better shoes than Converse as well. Well, we both got Converse on. You know, they're good. They're good all round trainers. 
Uh, but the, the the richer that people get, the less that they need to buy stuff to show off, the less flex that they need. Well, this is my view. This is my whole point. Well, that's it. This is my whole that's thing. why he always looks like a tramp. <laughs> yeah, um, it's my yeah, thing. Rolling in it. He is. It's my role. Uh, it's my thing. Won't spend mate. anything. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, no. Look, let's um, we'll be, we would genuinely be interested to know what how people feel about that because it is like. I, I think I, I think we do it the right way. We talk a lot about clients within the business as well, don't we? So like at any one yeah. time, we've got eight in the members group, 49 quid. 49 quid. Is that it? Ridiculous, yeah. For calls every week? Every week. In there. What, every week? <laughs> every week. Um, <laughs> and then we've got the, the Blitz that runs. And then we've got four coaches, their clients, my clients, your clients, so at any one time, we've got over 400 clients in the business. Mm. Literally. Quite literally. Quite literally. Yeah. So, yeah. Over 1,000 through Blitz. 1,200. 1,200 mm. these days. No. So there you go. You did the maths. Anyway, um, how we started by Sitsum Banter. So let's, oh, uh, let's, let's, go back. Back. Let's, go, let's go back first, Dan, because I know that you love talking about this. Mm. Where did it all begin? What, would you just to buy some banner or literally like everything? I don't know. Do you want to go into everything? Oh, I used to, right, I'll, quickly, because it's a bit boring, isn't it? Is it? Going all the way back. With you, yeah. <laughs> Mine, mine's a wild ride. <laughs> yours, is not, yours is boring. Um, so I used to work in professional football. No, 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 skip that one. Uh, no, yeah, so I used, to be a, uh, I used to be a sports scientist who was um, basically the guy who gives all the players like, you know, the GPS data and, you know, all that sort of stuff, reports to management about training loads of players and <laughs> yeah. what? all the fun stuff that I thought was really fun when I was 16, 17. I was like, I want to go into that. It sounds really great. It's the pioneering stuff of elite level sport. You know, it's going to revolutionize the way the game's played. It didn't. Um, is, you know, again, all this stuff you can do now with scientific data and stuff with, with footballers, um, again, monitoring training loads, monitoring, you know, they're highly tuned athletes, you'd think. Um, I did that as soon as I finished uni. I basically went to uni, did my master's, came out, did that, worked for a couple of clubs. Uh, the main one being Hull City, got promoted to the Premier League, uh, worked with Steve Bruce as manager, um, Tom Kearney, Paul McShane, you know, just name drop, just some, some Don't names. Know who Tom Kearney is. He plays for Fulham captain now, plays in the Premier League, it's fucking quality. Does he? Yeah. Robbie Brady. Did not know that. It's an island. Robbie Brady was there. Robbie Brady. Rob know. Corrin, remember Robbie I Corrin? Ian Brady. Robbie Corrin, remember Robbie Corrin? Very no, nice guy. Never Robbie heard of him. Jack what Hobbs, has he done since? James Chester. No. Who are these people? <laughs> well, they're better than Champions Wednesday. So, well, anyway, are they though? Anyway, really, I, and I loved it. And I, and I, I have to say, like, the, the, the being part of a football club and playing. You worked with Sigurdsson, didn't you, at Reading? Gilfrey Sigurdsson at Reading? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, <laughs> that one, yeah. Right? You right. went for fucking Robert Corey or whatever his fucking name is. <laughs> but missed out Gilfrey Sigurdsson. Gilfrey Sigurdsson, yeah. He's more well known. He went down, you know, didn't he? What's he? Yeah, what's he known for these but, days? Uh, well, well, I don't say that on here, no. not on this channel. No. Um, so. And I used to love like the, the the football side of it and the training and being with the players and the good banter and all that sort of stuff. But for what you were paid, which was peanuts um, and the politics of dealing with management and how sports science was used in the, at that age, just didn't didn't really enjoy it. And again, the players didn't really hugely buy into the S&C and, and they had so much potential they just didn't tap into. And it just became a little bit of like a, a losing battle. And um, yeah, I just got my dream job when I was 23. I was first team sports scientist at a Premier League football club. Um, not many people of that age get that sort of role and job. And I just saw people ahead of me in their first team S&C coach and a few other people who were like 40. And I just looked at it and I was like, I don't want to be doing this until I'm 40 and seeing what happened to them with, again, the politics and losing jobs and over nothing just because people didn't like them potentially or they didn't get on with the manager or something like that. And I just thought, I don't want to do this. I don't want to put my life in someone else's hands. So I quit. I Your literally, dad was impressed, wasn't he? Yeah, my dad was furious. Because um, I'd worked, like, since the age of 16, I knew I wanted to do that job. Mm. So I'd spent every summer from the age of 18 Pre, no, I went to come around at 18. In 19, every summer from the age of 19, working for free at football clubs. I got in, I got good I contacts. I about you at Come America. Yeah? Something about a stage. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good video. Good one, that one. Um, is that I, I gave up a lot of my, my, youth, my youth to a certain degree, like working for free in football clubs. I managed to develop good contacts. I got some work experience for free. I impressed enough for them to ask me back and interned at clubs and got paid peanuts. And I did my full year's internship at Hull City before I got the job. And I like, gave up a lot to kind of um, do it. And it was supposed to be a really good career. 
And then when I told my dad I was going to quit it and become a PT in London, he was just like, you what? You've just done all this. You've gone to uni. You've done all that stuff. And you're just going to throw it all away to be a PT in London. Which, again, looking back, I can understand his view because it's not seen as a glamorous job or a glamorous career or anything like that. But for me, I was like, I couldn't take orders from other people who were just clueless, didn't know what they were doing. And I didn't want to be that. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to do my own thing. And I knew that it could go somewhere. And I knew that it could be something bigger. Um, Keep your head down. You, you, you know, work hard. You could, uh, uh, you could, uh, you could get a ten percent discount code for my protein, mate. So yeah, have and that was, pro- that's what I was have going as many for. Protein shakers as, as that's, you want. That's what I was going for at the time. Um, and yeah, and, and it's funny actually because you know, it's things with that now, and he talk about how business is going and stuff, and he literally is like, uh, "You are right." You yeah, know. it's like you can't, you not can't believe it, but he's just like, he always says how proud he is, and like you know all this sort of shit, and it's nice to hear, but you know we're not done yet. Not yeah, done yet. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, that, and that literally just uh, quit, quit football. Um, when my dad had a kidney transplant and I used it as a sort of an excuse. I was like, I need to be near my parents and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, Where do you live now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite far away from them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I did that and then um, worked in London for uh, two years. Two years I worked in London. Pizza. Good on the tube, Dennis. Yeah, no more around London on tube. No, not the underground. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's quick. Look, you know, it's funny going on into London with Mike. It is quite funny. It's too hot. He hasn't got a clue. It's too hot. Um, and then good videos though, it was back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and so I was a PT in London for two years, and then moved to Bath, and that's when Team Box formed. Yeah. So you need to do your little bit before then as well before Team Box. Well, my little bit. Uh, I was a child prodigy uh, at school. Um, I learned the violin and Russian by the age of four. Uh, and they couldn't... What? <laughs> so it's any other language. It's, it's, a, it's a poor language right now, isn't it? That, it's not a good one to, to say. Useless. You could have said, said Ukrainian. He doesn't know. <laughs> he can't tell what it means. Subtitles, that. Um, no, no. I am... Um, yeah, so I grew up uh, not as privileged as Dan, sure. So more of a success story, really. <laughs> You know, rags to riches, uh, but very working class, Rotherham. Uh, but did okay at school. Where is Rotherham? I don't even know where it is. South Yorkshire. I don't even go that far. Just don't go that far north. He doesn't, yeah. He gets, <laughs> gets a headache and gets a nosebleed. Um, but uh, but yeah, so very working class family. Uh, I did well at school, though. Mum and dad really pushed me to do well at school. Uh, and I certainly think my dad instilled like a really competitive nature in me. Um, which is, uh, I think, been good in a way. If I'm being, this is going to turn into a therapy session, mm. but uh, it's been good in a way because it, I do think that it drives me, but also bad because I never feel good enough. And I always yeah. remember playing football, and if I made a mistake, because my dad came to every game, if I made a mistake, I'd look at my dad and he'd just shake his head at me, and it still sticks to me, you know. Like, still, that think, sticks with me. I think with that as well, though, like, because, so getting into football, football's like, was really competitive as well. And, like, you had to mm. really stand out in terms of CVs and stuff like that. And I, I had a bit of the same, which was, like, it was it was, it was was cutthroat to mm. get in. And, and once you were in, like, again, I had a bit of that when my dad was like, well, you've had an opportunity here to work for free. Like, they've given you an opportunity for a month or half a season. Like, go and impress them and, like, don't, mm. don't stop. Like, do every hour, stay later. And it's funny how... I believe that that has made us as successful as we are. But like you say, it does come with drawbacks. It does. Like, I remember, so at school, I never had a detention. No, didn't have, did you? I bet you didn't either. Not, maybe one or two. If, but again, like, one of those things where it's like, it was a group of you and you wouldn't, we didn't want to snitch yeah. on someone, so they just put everyone together. I bet you did. I bet you snitched. I didn't. Mate. Loads of times. I'm not a snitch. Mate. Um, but, um, <laughs> but, so I, n- I never had a det- uh, detention, ever. Like, I remember once at junior school, my mum and dad came to parents' evening and there was a piece of my work on the on the wall. Do you know, when you make it on the wall, it's quite good, isn't it? But it wasn't... Was it a handprint, was it? Yeah, handprint, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Um, six. 15 six, years six old. Six fingers. 15 years um, old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my mum and dad didn't deem it good enough. Um, so they grounded me. It was the only time I ever got grounded. That it was on the wall. I was only like nine. And <laughs> it wasn't good enough. But... You know, like my mum and dad are not, you know, like we are very working class. Dad's a lorry driver, mum's a cleaner, um, but they they wanted better. They 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 wanted it better for me. So I was. It was always. It's a shame. Yeah, I know. Fuck it, they, <laughs> they failed. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like it was always instilled like this competitive nature and almost like 
this like fear of failure. And um, anyway, I, I kind of did, so from that, I kind of did well at school. Um, got pushed down a, a, a career I didn't want to go down to. What was it? Dentistry. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine you as a dentist. Look at you. Open, right? Can you imagine that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. I can't shit myself yeah. seeing you there. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. yeah, imagine. Because you, 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 yeah. <laughs> you'd be playing pranks. You'd be just like, yeah. What's, so I've not put any anesthetic in here. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. water. So, yeah, yeah. you know, straight in. Like Fucking hell, first time. <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> first time it is. Um, don't be nervous. Don't yeah, be nervous. Yeah, yeah. If anyone's going to be nervous, it's me. Just it's my yeah, first time. Yeah, you yeah. just you just like get the textbook out of that. Going, <laughs> like what's, that yeah, yeah. what's that tooth again? The yeah. molar. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. What's a molar? I don't, yeah. I just don't remember that. You've yeah, got too many of these. Let me take three out. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, I don't know why you're nervous. Bloody hell, you ought to see what I did to the last person. I'm the one who should be nervous. Um, but yeah, got um, anyway. It was kind of quota filling. I think it looks good for the school and stuff. But I, I didn't want. I didn't want to do it. I always wanted to do something in in sport because I was good at sport and stuff like that. Well, you weren't that good, your dad said, so, you know. Well, no, well, I know, yeah, but I could have made it. Football yeah. is neat. So, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. but anyway, so I was like, right, I'll go into the Air Force. I still wanted to do further education. I was like, I'm going to go into the Air Force and be a, a, a PTI, so personal training instructor, and do do a degree in there sports-wise because I kind of missed the boat with the, um, the A-level type thing. I would have had to have had a year out to reapply for uni because it was all kind of closed. I'd got a conditional offer to, to, to a uni and so on and so forth. Um, but I was like, okay, my, my mom and dad wanted me to get to, to basically get out of the house, essentially, um, get yeah. a job. Don't blame them. Gen- no, genuinely, Stop it, it, get it, the it was out. it was a bit like that. It was a bit like, mm. you need to get a job, otherwise you're out, like mm. type thing. So I was like, okay, right. So I'll join, join the RF. And then again, same thing happened again. Did the aptitude test uh, in quota filling. They were just kind of sold it to me. I was only 18. And it was like, You'll you'll do great as an engineer. It's high aptitude. You get paid more than personal trainer. What well, well, you know all of this. So I was like, okay, cool. Sounds amazing. Eighteen. First four years, great. Like absolutely loved it. And I still do attribute like the military to like uh, certain things that were instilled within me. Again, hard work, and I think uh, sense of humor as well. Like those those two things, hard work, sense of humor, have been the things that that I've really taken away from it. I did enjoy. I did enjoy parts of it. Um, I really liked being around guys. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, but really liked like the banter, that type element. Again, you young lads. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's a good experience. Last five years of it. So I was in. I was in for nine. Last five years, not so good. I got put in a place where they were predominantly ex-military. So you're talking like fifty-five to sixty-year-old guys who had been out of the military, very old school, like just not the same environment doing a job I didn't like so kind of didn't like it and whatever and um but I was fundamentally unhappy with the work that I was doing anyway um because it, it wasn't sport it wasn't my passion it was engineering there were people better than me at it because they were interested they were like going home fixing their cars I was never interested in stuff like that yet I was in the RF you know I was playing football uh, in the RF I was going to the gym I was training some of my mates and it was like I still wanted to to do it so I then started to get qualified, you know, got my qualifications and so on and so forth. PT did the BTN um, Academy. Dan was, I think you were, I think you were teaching on the course. I think you were teaching. Did you teach on the course or not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, I think you were given one module or something. Um, it was mainly a few other people. But you were there as well. Um, and yeah, I just kind of, and I, I did some business coaching, invested in like a, like a, like a mentor. It was a mentorship, let's be honest. It wasn't particularly very good. Three and a half grand. Straight on a credit card, because I had no money. Uh, I was actually in debt at the time, um, quite a lot, quite heavily in debt. Uh, poor decision making, uh, and literally just having no money. Um, and then, yeah, I just set my business up, um, knew what I wanted to do, knew that I needed to do it well, um, did it well. Uh, kind of got my face seen by BTN. Um, which was a real kind of privilege at the time because it was like through the podcast that kind of like spurred me into going to this. I'd gone and watched Dan you know, at a seminar and things like that. Um, I got offered a job at BTN. Put, put the cat, very much put the cat amongst pigeons, very much with some of the percentages that they're offering me. You know, we're talking silly money. Um, you know, the old guard were pissed off, you know, ah, mm-hmm. you know, one in particular. Um, but 
ba- basically, like, couldn't agree, you know, terms and so on and so forth. But having, but from that experience, I met Dan, I met uh, a couple of the other guys that we went on to then form Team Box, and then that's where I've. There we yeah, go. So I moved to, I moved to Bath. Um, so me and Laura had Isabel. In, uh, she was born in London, and she was about six months. Six months old, I think it was. Um, and Laura had obviously given up all her one-to-one PT clients because she was on maternity leave. And it was kind of one of these moments where we were like, again, with the amount of clients we had rushing around all the time. And I had about 15 online clients, I think it was, paying me about probably 100, 150 quid a month, something like that. And it was one of those like now or never moments, I think. It was kind of like um, Team Box was starting to form properly. Um, and we just moved. We just quit it. Like not a lot of money per month we were making. We had enough savings to kind of like last us six months maybe there. Just took the plunge. Um, and again, we talk about this a lot because I think it's important that people realize that people sometimes think, oh, it's easy for you because you did this or, you know, you look like, you, you know, you can say to people, oh, yeah, just take the take the plunge, take the leap. But I think you need, people need to realize that we've done it. We did it. Mm. We took the plunges. Like, again, I left football, well-paid job to go move to London with my mates from uni without a Scooby. Like, I got offered a job at a PT um, PT club where you get paid base, a very, very low basic pay to do like shifts as it were. And then like you get a percentage of your PT stuff. And um, I think me and Tom, so Tom and I did a podcast with Tom Hall, we joined at the same time, literally within three days of each other. And we got on really well. And we had a competition to see who could get the most number of clients in the first month. Who won? I won, I think just about. But we had like, and the, the manager at the time called us both in. And he was just like, you both have had the best first months we've ever seen PTs have in this gym. And we literally just spent all day in the gym. That's why, because we were just there all the time. Any person that came in or out, the sales guy we're getting close to, like, it's not fucking rocket science. It's stuff we're now teaching people to do, right? Um, but yeah, we, we and then did the same thing when we moved to Bath two years later. We were like, right, let's start again. Like, just that belief in yourself, like belief going, well, I'm going to make this work. Like you, like you, where you're like, at what you point did you get it. those awful socks though? In that journey? At Much what point? later down the line. Much later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, no, I can look. afford to waste money on socks, so there it's fine. Go. But, um, and, and I think it's easy people to, to, to look at us and go, well, yeah, sure, you've achieved your goals, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it's it's predicated by making those leaps, though. And the same here. Like, moving out to Dubai, it's like, well, you don't know that's going to work out. You hope it's going to work out, and you hope that things are going to go okay. You back, but you back yourself, don't you? And I think that these are traits that you have to have to, to, to be successful in this, mm-hmm. is that it's backing yourself. And I think sometimes you have to be in a position of fight or flight. You have to put yourself in those positions and they're scary and it's shit. But when I look back, it's the one thing that we both have in common. Mm -hmm. We both have different upbringings, different ways of doing things, but we both backed ourselves to go, I want to do this more than I want to do my current job for, for, for regular pay and, you know, pension and that shit. You, you know, people sell you. Yeah, no, Um, Uh, we we made the leap. It would have been easy to have done that. Like military is a fairly stable thing. Mm. You get a pension, like engineering, you can walk into a decently, a lot of my mates who have left the RAF walked into a decently paid job. You know, you're probably talking anywhere between maybe 15, 80 grand. Um, they've, they've kind of walked into those jobs uh, in, in our career. So, so, but, it's taking that leap and having that, that confidence and knowing that you're going to make it work. There was never a doubt. It, it's weird looking back because I never had yeah. a doubt in my mind. I never so ever when we left doubted though. it. So when we did Bison's Bath, so we were in Team Box for, what was it, two years maybe? Yeah. A year and a half, two years. So again, we worked in a, in a, com- in a company, but there was five of us doing this, this effectively. And it basically boils down to over that time period, a few different ways of doing things came together and there was one person who thought they knew best and were leading it and it just became fractured to the point where we were like this can't carry on because there's me and you that wanted to do it one way one person wanted to do it another way and then the other two wanted to do it another way and it just became natural that it just split and it Mm -hmm. just it just came apart and i remember me and you were like we felt like we needed to break away and do it because we were being held back and i think the others felt like they were as well Mm -hmm. um they're not in fitness anymore but whatever um so me and you again at that point even at that point when we then left that and did our own thing we were like again bit of bricking ourselves like fucking hell like oh my god because you do feel like you have a a a bit more power as a a five even though looking back there was no reason to think that in Mm -hmm. any way shape or form but it's that fear and and you, you know power by numbers strength by numbers thing and but when we did that we had no doubt that in two years that we would be better we had no doubt we were like we can do our own thing now. We know what we want to do. We can double down on it. And we just knew that if we backed ourselves, it would pay up. 
That's it. Like I don't I don't know where that comes from, but it, so even even when I was leaving the RF, I had my job. Uh, I had my my boss say. Um, what do you want to be a nutritionist for? Um, they were mad themselves, aren't they? No, he didn't say that. <laughs> no, he said, uh, off his quote, um, he said, why do you want to be a nutritionist? He said, one of my friends who uh, goes to the locals nutritionist and doesn't doesn't do well at all, he was like, you need to go on a CV writing course. This is what they teach you to do when you leave the RAF. Go on a CV writing course and get another engineering job. And then my parents were like, oh, you've done this as an engineering. You should get in, in, into an engineering job or a trade. She said, oh, my mum was like, oh, no one's going to you know, employ a personal trainer. That's what they think it is, um, and and still stuff like that does stick with me, like things like that stick with me. People telling me that I can't do stuff mm. that really sticks with me. Like when we when we left Team Box and the way that it ended with like the whole "I'm sure you'll be okay" the comment to us, like yeah, the stuff sticks with me, and I still think about it on probably a more regular. Um, occasion uh, a more regular basis sorry that that potentially should do but like stuff like that just like just it just sticks it's just in there and it mm. just I just like I but like like you said there like I I back myself like I know that if I lost everything I could build it again mm-hmm. like I, I truly believe it hope I don't like yeah, please don't take it away from yeah me. please don't you know yeah. um, I work twice as hard Um but I, I would I would back myself that I could do it, mm. and I, I don't know whether there's almost like a lack of confidence from some coaches that I work with that they don't almost like they're scared to take that 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 leap. But I knew that if I was going to do it, I was going to do it, the, and I and I, I would do it the best. Like I I had such confidence, right? Mm. Do you know when I was like studying like the email marketing and business and you know consultation calls back in the day before people were doing them? You know, I won't, I'm not going to say I invented them, <laughs> um, you know, but as good as um, especially my way of doing it yeah. when, and if you want to learn that way it's in the 49 members group so. it is in there yeah. um, so but like even then I knew I was going to be good at it like mm. I was I was scared because there's that element of you've got no followers why is someone going to join up with me and we've all been there again to those people who don't don't have as many, as many clients yet we all sent out an email to, to five subscribers we all put out posts yeah. that got no likes we've all we've all done it there was that you know i was scared but there was always that part of me where i was like i was i remember it i was excited because i felt like i knew something that other people didn't like everybody that i was working with in the rf i felt like i knew something that they didn't mm. and i felt like i know what's coming it, it's the weirdest feeling looking back i always felt like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make it, make this a success. Um, it's, it's a weird feeling. I think um, it's. We've had this discussion before where we've said like, I think if we'd met each other and we were doing our own thing in insurance or fucking you know medicine or whatever, we would have been successful because of our mindset to it. Not necessarily that, and this is just something that we've grown up with with fitness and then learning the business side of stuff. But there is an element to it where. It, it requires a different way of thinking and a different way of doing things. And I think when I look back, I've, we never, I've never really thought that deeply about it, but when I look back and think all those little leaps we took, it just builds to you just backing yourself. And then mm-hmm. that mindset is like, well, it will, if I work as hard as I know I can, then it will work. Mm-hmm. And I think it boils down to some people don't know how hard they can work. Yeah. Um, and it's different because if you've never worked for yourself, you will never know how hard you can work. Mm. Because people go, oh yeah, I work, I work hard. I'm like, well, no, you worked for someone else in an office from nine to five. That's not hard. Mm. That's not hard work. It's harder when it's your own shit. You don't see the instant return on it and you back yourself. Like you said, it's, mm. it's harder to see the, the bigger picture in six, nine months time. And I think people look at a lot of these mentorships and stuff like that and mentoring in general and they kind of go, oh, where am I going to be in six weeks? And it's like, you're thinking about this all wrong. Mm. Where are you going to be in six years? Yeah. Think about that. Then go, right, well, where can I be in two years? Where can I be then in six months? Because what we've done is it's four years now, isn't it? Is this, we're into our fifth year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fifth year. Four, it was four in J- July? 2018. Yeah. July 2018. July. So, yeah. It, and, it, and it's definitely compounded. It's not like, it's not been year on year is the same. It's compounded yeah. each year. And it's easy to think that it doesn't do that it's easy to think like oh yeah it's easy for you to say you did this you did that but like i said i moved to to bath with 15 online clients Mm -hmm. and that was in 2015 Mm -hmm. something around there 
it's a long time ago and I had 15 and like you could argue then, okay, well to go from there to then 40 took me three years. Even 40 to 70 took me 12 months. Mm -hmm. 70 to 100 then took another, say nine or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then we've got group coaching and all the other things on top of it. But everything we're saying is not, it's not based on any magic. It's like, that's not being quick. And it's like the whole thing we talked about James Smith with the emails and the, the Facebook lives and like people just see the- Overnight success. Well, when I found him, he was on a million followers and he's, you know, so he must've been big. It's like, yeah. no, like you, that's when you found him. He was, mm. he was doing this ages ago. And I think people, when we say to people, oh yeah, look, you need to give up the 120, you need to give up your job so you can go into the online. I think, oh, it's easy for you to say, isn't it? I'm like, well, yeah, but I also know it. because I did it mm -hmm. four years ago and I did it four times <laughs> effectively. Like. Mm -hmm take that leap and yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this point, but it, it, it's, it's, I think it's easy to watch videos like this and go, oh, it's easy for them to say it, but it's like, no, but we've done it. We've, mm. we've lived it and we know that the benefits of that, again, if you back yourself, if you can work hard and look, we were the type of people at the time who didn't go, oh, I don't want to be Instagram all weekend. I'd, I'd rather just have my days off. No, we were fucking working. Mm -hmm. You best believe that our, again, the compounding stuff, right, has gone up like that, but our work and the amount we work has probably gone down. <laughs> like yeah but like no but i mean like as in like not like uh, well, massively i'm not doing but five out five a.m starts and yeah, yeah right but there was a time where you were doing five a.m starts you were mm. doing all the hours god sends you were you were learning all this stuff whilst in a job you were doing all this stuff a, as a side hustle i have a line now until uh, quarter past five <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but i remember getting up from in london i get remember getting up for the tube the f i remember getting up for the first tube of the day mm -hmm. i used to get up for the first tube that come and that was like 10 to 5 or something stupid in the morning to get for a client at six o'clock yeah. I remember doing it. They are silly hours. And 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 so it's like, well, I, I don't sit there and be like, it's easy for you to say, because no, it's not. I've been there. I've done it and I've given up the money and I've had to do six hours in the middle of a day with no clients and had to do the work. And I just think it's that, easy for people to sit the there thing and think is that. That's the thing is that people want the success but are not prepared to do the hard work because it often, you often but The hard thing is we couldn't film that. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. go back in time and film it. And also at the time you don't film it because you're like, well, who's going to fuck someone else's? It's useless because you don't know where you're going to be. Yeah. But it would have been useful to have a bit of a... You don't see the behind the scenes of what no. goes off. Like you see, again, the the highlight reel and, and, and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden you're wherever. But it... Um, like it would it would be useful. Like, do you know like when they film those like documentaries of people that end up being successful down the line? You've seen the Kanye one? No. I mean not. that's quite good. Um where they they're filming him before he's before yeah, he's yeah. Kanye West basically. Which is mad because you think, Well, why are they filming him? Like He must have been alright at that point. Yeah, he was like he was a producer. But anyway. But um but yeah, so so getting back to us kind of like leaving Team Box. So the reason why we kind of like left is like Dan said there was a bit of a difference of opinion of, of certain stuff um, and the reason why I bring it coming back to this is because the difference of opinion was mainly to do with like the marketing element of it um, which we feel really really strongly on um, me and Dan were for being yourself being authentic not being too scripted um, swearing showing realness um, and we were we were strong with that whereas the I guess the other half of things were more like it needs to look more professional, more polished. It should be scripted. Um, we shouldn't be advocating talk about fitness. alcohol. Yeah, you can only talk about fitness. That type of stuff. So we had, it, it was very, you know, a, a real clear, um, a real clear, like, fracture, I guess. Um, so we started, a, we started a YouTube channel, and that's what we call Biceps Matter. This YouTube channel, actually, you're watching it. Yeah. Um, you're here. Uh, welcome. Um, yeah. you know, go back to go back to video one. You know, <laughs> you know go all the way back. Um, so we started it, um, and that's where we came up with the name Biceps and Banner. So we started the YouTube channel before we actually started the the business together as such, because we were told that we weren't allowed to well, weren't allowed, but we shouldn't be putting this type of content, you know, or the content that we were putting out at the time on the team box social media because it, it tarnished the brand name and you know it was bad for the brand i, I got to, i got told a few times i'm bad for the brand we'll see yeah, we'll see um but where is the brand yeah where, where is the brand <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore you know so um yeah so i got told which is quite annoying you know being kind of like almost feel like you're having the volume turned down on things and you know, especially when you think, All right, no, I know what I'm doing and I know that this is the right way to go about it. Mm. And me and Dan kind of kind of clicked, like we were in the off, we, we'd be in the office and, um, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd be the ones that got stuff done. We'd be, in my opinion, we, we would be the ones that kind of 
like could see the bigger picture of stuff rather than just doing the same spreadsheet over and over again, basically. Um, mm. In joke there. Um, but we could see the bigger picture, and it just it just got to a point where this YouTube cha- this YouTube channel had started to you know started to go okay. We'd gone to body power. Some people had kind of like um, like come over and, and said that they enjoyed watching the YouTube and so on and so forth, and it was getting shared by you know uh, a few people at the time, uh, and we th- we were we were enjoying it. Like that was the main thing. It was like mm. it was enjoyment. Like it, the 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 fun was there again. It was like we were acting daft. People sending Dan wigs. Um, we were fucking doing it like. And again, if you've not watched the old stuff, go and go and go and watch it. You know, it's probably not going to be useful to you, but it might be entertaining. Um, but it, it was it was it was fun, um, and that's why we came up with the name biceps and banter as well. Because I still f- I still feel it cringy. I still find it like a cringy name. Yeah. If I've got to say my uh, email address to somebody, yeah, um, it's still. Cringy. I don't use that one. I use any other one. Yeah, but my other one is Young Owl eighty eight, <laughs> which my auntie. Said I also like. like. I also so this is another thing. Just on that is I do feel a bit like that now because I get like now living here neighbors be like, oh, you got your own business. Like, what's it called? I'm like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, biceps and banter. What? What? <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a yeah. YouTube channel. Biceps and banter. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, don't look at it. Yeah, my my <laughs> head my hairdresser did that because I'm like you won't you won't get it like you know and you're like you're not in the industry and all that sort of stuff and, and maybe that maybe that's maybe we should change it but uh, but it's one of those where for us we only want to work with people who are somewhat in the industry who know these sorts of things so to them it wouldn't sound as weird but it's um, mm. it is a bit looking back it is a bit like oh not sure but. it was the first one that we stumbled upon yeah. We well, tried a few, didn't we? we? This was the first one we, we came back to all the time. So, so yeah. So, uh, I think we toyed with the idea of changing it for when we kind of set the, set the business up on it. Yeah. I think I think the discussion came up, but we were just like, no, let's just let's just do it in this. Well, people know us as that now. Yeah. Like, if you say Bison's about now, people know it's me and you, and and it's that it's, it's a it's a recognizable name. The branding's recognizable. It's again, if you search on YouTube, nothing else really comes up. Um, do you know? Rather yeah. than you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a fuck. It, you know, all these generic names people have. Evolve for coaching. fitness and yeah, stuff like, like that. How many evolves are they? You know, like yeah. strong with you. Oh, all right, fucking hell. Yeah, it's just that whole thing of it was unique at the time. Yeah, um, like us. So. Yeah. So so yeah. So it started with YouTube, um, and then we set off doing doing coaching. Um, well, continuing coaching, uh, but just under yeah. our brand. The first thing that we did, I think, was was get our branding done. Yeah. Um, because we saw value in getting the branding done, which people need to do, I guess. Well, again, for the YouTube as much as anything, it was it was about solidifying us as a two, wasn't it? Yeah. Going, right, well, this is who we are. Um, and then it just went from strength to strength. Really, like I said, we just kept putting our our own content out, being ourselves, and things grew quite quickly. Um, and then over COVID, it was like. I think you'd moved away at this point from Bath because you moved to Bath to be near the so, office. Yeah, so I moved. This is this is this is a thing actually. <laughs> It still annoys so, me. Yeah, day. this still annoys me, right? So, like, um, I uh, I was living um, in Sheffield at the time, uh, and one of the the, mem- the one of the guys in Team Box was like, "Oh, well, we've got this office. We're gonna get an office. Well, we're gonna get an office. Um, so we'd really need you to be down here." <sighs> okay. Well, you know. One of those things where I got no real major ties. I'd always lived away from Sheffield, being in the Air Force and stuff like that. But it was quite annoying because I, w- I was enjoying being back around family and friends. It was the first time since I was 18 that I'd been around family and friends. So at this point, I'm now 30. Yeah, because I had my 30th birthday in, in Sheffield. Mm. So, I, so I'm now 30, so for 12 years. And it was like, oh, we need you in in Bath, mm, do we? Um, but okay. So I moved down, like got rid, of, got rid of the the house, moved to a, a one bed apartment in Bath because it's more expensive. Um, and at the time, we weren't on huge flight numbers and stuff like that. But again, bit of a risk, bit of a gamble. Um, moved down away from family and friends. And um, how long were we in the office? About two months. Maybe. Two. It, 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 was, it was more than two months. Well, since I moved down, we had yeah. the, the no, we since had the, you moved down. Then. Yeah. So we had the office a little bit longer. I was still contributing, still paying to it because we all chipped in and paid to it. Still contributing, still paying for the office. So what I would do is I would drive down, um, stay at mine, stay at Dan's, do some work in the office, go back, then come back the next week again every Monday, or every Sunday. Every Sunday I'd come down from Monday. The, the, the game plan had changed every Monday, by the way. So the the time that I'd spent away from the office, I'd come back and the game plans changed again. But regardless, um, I uh, an interesting thing is actually I remember I always remember driving to the office and um, weeing myself in the car. 
don't know why I said that. But I had an Audi TT at the time. Could have kept that quiet. No, you didn't. I, I, right. And the drive from Sheffield to Bath is quite long. It's about four hours. Mm. If you got stuck in traffic, horrendous. Five, six hours. And there was one time I was driving, stuck in traffic, and I was dying for a wee. Like, fuck it, honest to God. Busting. Busting, 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 busting. Like, to the point where you're starting to get mad at yourself for not going before. <laughs> why, why haven't I got, like, do you know? I, I started to panic. And I, there was a bottle there. So, okay, bottle. Okay. Uh, bearing in mind, I'm in an OTT, which is quite low. Um, so gravity is not working on my side here. So, you know, bent it over as, as much as you can bend it. Um, you know, and started to wee in, the, in this bottle, you know, undignified, in a, tra- in a traffic jam, you know. Undignified, sure. And because I'd had to bend it, because obviously you're sat quite low, I, there was still some in the pipe. So as I, like, as I thought I'd finished weeing, I'd, um, I straightened it back out and obviously it shot out. It shot out all over the roof, a bit on my face, on my glasses, and then all over my grey joggers <laughs> I got on, all over my grey joggers. Oh. So, yeah, so I was just sat in my own piss. <laughs> um, yeah, so I thought I definitely need to work to, 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 to move down to this office now to prevent that. <laughs> that, that, was the, that was the defining thing. That like, was that's it. The I'm going to move down. So, yeah, as Dan said, oh. moved down two months later. Email went around. Guys, just so you know, I've got rid, uh, I've gotten rid not of the office. Not renewed the lease in the office. We don't need it anymore. Fuck you now. Oh, so oh, well, oh, we don't need the office now. Okay, it's funny that because I thought we said we definitely needed. I just signed office. a one-year lease on a on a one-bed apartment. Yeah. 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 Oh, my goodness. yeah. And it was literally, I think it was about two months after that, wasn't it? We were like, we're done. Yeah. We were just like, and there's a few other things that happened at the time in terms of like some launches and things and stuff that that hadn't gone as we we'd expect them to, and. Uh, yeah, we just made the most of it, didn't we? And then you you moved back up away from me as far as possible because um, we didn't need an office, funny enough. Um, so we carried on. But we had YouTube. some good times in Bath. We did, yeah. We, we had some. We, we had, and, and I think looking back, it was probably the thing that we had the most fun with. Yeah, was the YouTube videos. We used to go into London. We used to do all these random other things when we had a bit more time. Two challenges again, with client numbers at that point. We're probably on maybe it's fifty, sixty, something like that. Yeah, it was it was kind of manageable um, to do all the other content and have fun with it, and because we were really close, it worked. I mean. We're closer now, but probably see less of each other because we've more, much more work on. Too much work. So it's like, whereas then it was probably about two days of check-ins, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, whereas between now 50 we're on and like, 60 is two days, isn't now it? Now we're on, at the moment, we're on three days of check-ins and two work days where we do like proper work with calls and everything Other like that. So stuff. it's a bit, it's a bit harder, but yeah, it was, it was really good fun. And again, probably at the age we're at and the time of our lives, probably the perfect time to be doing that sort of stuff. And... um then you'd be back up to Sheffield. We'd go back and forth and film videos and stuff like that. And then... Lockdown. Yeah, COVID hit, didn't it? We couldn't do videos um, with COVID. We were trying to do some separate, didn't we? But it, just it, didn't, it didn't, didn't work. It didn't work as well. And, and obviously no one knew what was going to happen. And then as soon as lockdown's finished, Mike was like, I'm moving to Dubai um, away from you because you it, it, No, it was during lockdown. So I moved out during lockdown. So I moved out in October. It was so during the second one, wasn't second it? Second one, yeah. That so it, yeah. It, it had like a mini brief opening yeah. where we could do some stuff. And then it locked down again. And we were just like fuck this like yeah. fuck like fuck this and t- a- again to the point um because it, it'd be it'd be silly not to mention it as well is that the business was at a point where <laughs> if we continued to grow it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been beneficial for the business f- financially no. like it would have been and again for, for coaches you're hamstrung by so much tax, you, you, you're, you're hamstrung by tax so again, you, you have to be kind of candid and say say those things because it wasn't a, an honest thing that you're thinking about that contributes to the decision to move away. Uh, you know, that it is like, okay, well, we're in a second lockdown. Dubai's not locked down. There's also no tax out there. It's nice. We came on holiday. We kind of liked it. We're just like, do you know what? Fuck it. Like, mm. we don't know how long this lockdown is going to last. We don't know wh- whether I'm going to be able to film videos with Dan or not. Like, whatever. So let's just do it. And nothing we can't. There's nothing that we can't do over over Skype in terms of the business because that's how we were running it anyway. We're just like, well, let's let's do it. Um, did you say Skype? Did I say Skype? Old school, mate. Yeah. Isn't it? That's yeah. showing my age. Zoom. Zoom. It was Zoom. Yeah. Zoom. You know, Zoom meets. Wh- whatever it is. Hangouts. It was, it was, what was it? it? Was about. It was a year, wasn't it, of doing that? So then we we do that. We've been there. For, we've been doing that for about a year. Um, group coaching was going well and all those sorts of things. Obviously, the business was in Dubai. And then it was about a year after you moved that I came out to visit you. I came out in September to visit. Yeah. Um, get a week away. I still had my check-ins and everything like that. And I 
it was kind of to scope it out a little bit as to see what it was like. And I said to Mike when I moved over, I was like, I don't want to go and see all the the sights and sounds. I want to see what it's like to live there for a week. Um, and I got back home and I remember on the drive back from Heathrow, driving the car and I knew, I was like, we're going. Hmm. I said, like, we're moving. And I, mess- I got home and said to Laura, and I was like, we're going, like we should do it. We should go join him. And that was September and it was 1st of December. Then after that, we moved. It was three months after. Um, and, it, and again, it was, again, back yourself. It was just, uh, what can we do? What can we grow? How can we do things? And um, we knew that being back together would make it better for our business. Which it and, it, and it has, and it, and it always was going to. And I think that was never a concern at all. It was, again, just a different way of life, different way of doing things. Um, and and there may be something in the future again where there'll be another big decision to make at some point. There may well be that, but it certainly feels like all these things have led to this point. Do you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard, it's, it's kind of hard to describe, but it, it does feel like it was always going to be this way. Mm-hmm. Like, I think once you moved out, it was always that thing in my head of like, oh, well, probably should go then. Um, and it was only because of COVID and what happened there enforced Laura's business online. That I was like, we, we then we were like, well, it's, why not then? Before it was always like, oh, ties there and all this sort of stuff. But again, I'm the same as you. I'd always lived away from home, away from family. Laura had always lived away from home, lived away from family. So it does make it a bit easier. Yeah. Um, because for us, we were like, well, it's a four-hour drive to see our parents anyway. What's a seven-hour flight? It's, it's fucking the same. Yeah. To us, it was like, there's still a thought process involved and all that. And um, yeah, it's... So when people say, oh, it's easy for you to say that, it's like, well, yeah, because we've done it four times. We know the benefits mm. um, of, of making those leaps and those jumps. And I think it's important that people know what's happened on the side of it because it comes from a place of what we understand absolutely and we know like we're not sat here with some like half million pound investment and just telling you how to do all this shit because we did a course once Mm. we haven't done a course we haven't done anything like that we're just telling you what we've done how we've got to where we got and that literally with hard work being authentic giving a shit about people consistency being consistent with it you can you can do something similar but not in four weeks or six months, probably. That's that's the thing, though. Like that is the thing is that that's that's all we did. Like with with this channel, we don't have we don't have a million followers or hundred thousand followers or anything like that. But when we and look, who knows where it could have been if we'd have carried on with the same frequency without COVID hitting, of course. But like we know what it's like to start something from scratch. We start a YouTube channel from scratch. Like it's still only got two and a half thousand um, followers. We we still only getting two hundred views. But we still keep turning up and we're still putting effort in and we're still authentic to ourselves and we still keep beating the drum because that's the thing that you do. What we don't do is we've not filmed five of these and gone, oh, it's only got 200 views. Let's not bother with point, it. Yeah. That's not how you look at stuff. And, and a lot of online coaches do look at that and they're too knee-jerk with it. They're very much a, oh, that doesn't work or this, uh, well, that's pointless. Oh, I've only got 13 on my email list, so I'm, I'm going to wait till there's more on it to post. Stupid. I, I, rem- I remember... I remember sitting, uh, and again, these little moments crop up in me because I always remember them, but I remember sitting in um, Kelowna where I was having a coffee and I was ri- writing the Kelowna? first... Uh, Kelowna? Kelowna? Kelowna. 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 Sounds like a colonic. Kelowna. 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 Sure he, calls it, he calls it Kelowna, so I'm sure Does it's, he? it's called Kelowna. Does he? Yeah. He calls it Kelowna. I'm sure that's why I changed well, how should, I said it. You should change it um, to Kelowna. And I remember because w- I first talked about the lead magnet on my Instagram stories and it got 39 people on it. And I remember sending my first email to 39 people. There you go. I remember it. As, uh, I remember where I was sat in the coffee shop having that coffee because again, those moments are oh, for yeah. me on the bar by the uh, cakes. Oh, just on the left hand side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was one of those moments where I was like, "This is, this is the start." Like, I don't remember where I was when I was at like, hundred subscribers and all that sort of stuff. But then I remember with YouTube when we got our first, when we got to thousand. Because we were always banging on about the first thousand is the hardest. Yeah. Well, no, the first hundred is the hardest. First hundred. The first yeah. milestones are the hardest. The first hundred is harder than the thousand. Thousand is, is harder than 10,000. And that's what they say. Mm. Because again, the consistency required to get those numbers is mm. harder than it is. Because again, you get no feedback, no shares. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and to hear coaches, oh, I mean, it's only sent out to 19 people. I've only got 19. Listen, people listen to the podcast. Again, me and Tom have been doing a podcast for... <laughs> five years? Five years. years. Something like that. Five years. Because it was a way for us to keep in touch when we moved away. Um, and it's peaked higher than where it is now, but it gets 700 listens a, a week or something like that, which is nothing, but we don't promote it anymore. But again, like you wouldn't get to those higher numbers. I think the peak, we peaked at about 15,000 in a month once when it was going really well. We had loads of guests on, but people get like 90 subscribers. and oh, it's not really worth it, is it? <laughs> not with that attitude. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
Yeah. Because it's not about the numbers. It's about putting it out mm. and not expecting anything in return. It's about not expecting anything in return. So what what does the future of Barcelona look like? What do Fuck you think? Knows, mate. We don't know, do we? But we don't so that's know. another thing. I think that we never did it for anything. No. We didn't start YouTube to be a millionaire from YouTube. It was just a, well, we enjoy pissing around together. So why don't we film it? I'm sure people like watching it. Yeah. It was that. And it's the same with this, with wanting to help people do this sort of stuff with their businesses. I've got no idea where this is going to go. Mm. And I don't think that's a problem. It's and I think not. too many coaches, and maybe the mentorships and stuff are, are part of the problem is that you have to have this great big plan. You have to, have to know where you're going with all this sort of stuff. But I don't, think you necessarily do you need to have an idea maybe and maybe where you want to be and, and directions you want to go but too many people are looking at the future and not living in the present and, and enjoying what they're doing mm. we do this job because we enjoy it and I think for us the future will probably hold honestly the way that I see it and the way that I want to do it is that it will be a, probably a similar income level but less work mm -hmm. I think we've reached a point where we want to enjoy the sights and sounds and, and the lifestyle that after the last seven years of fucking working our asses off we can we can have a bit more time off, a bit more, a bit more time to enjoy, enjoy life. And again, it, but I don't know. But then we could turn around in six months' time and something amazing comes up. We've got to work our nuts off again. Okay, we'll work our nuts off again. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's okay to not have a plan and just to enjoy. It's okay to not have a plan as long as you're working hard and you're still being consistent. Like, that's the thing is that yeah. if you keep doing that, it will lead you down the path that you're supposed to be going down because everything that we've done hasn't necessarily been planned to the point where like we launched a group coaching because we planned it two years earlier. Like, but what we do do is, is if we're going to do something, we execute it well. We don't give up on stuff. Um, we, we work hard. We try to make it the best thing that it can be. Like we, we've always been like, we always wanted to do that. I always, and this is why our ethics are kind of where they are is because, when when I was getting into this, I wanted to be the best coach I could be. Like that was it. It was like I want to be the best coach that I can be for the demo demographic of people that I want to help. Like, and I almost want to have a slight bit of arrogance about how good I am and and how crap other people are. Mm. And that's where we do a lot of our marketing with like the hero villain stuff and we, you know, and and so on and so forth. But like, it's always stems from wanting to to do the. To you know, to do the best and to to be the best version of what we could could be, mm. and we will continue to do that. And wherever that leads us, and like you said, like the the next thing is obviously, it's it's more it's more time. But that time might then be filmed with, uh, be filled with some filming of some YouTube stuff. That's it. It's, it's it's to having the choice, right? I think that's the biggest thing that I want for us is to going forward is to have the choice, not to feel like we have to do something. That's mm. the that's the next step. I think is 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 having the choice to do those things, but. We've, we've never been that way. We've never thought too far ahead. We've never aimed for monetary goals for hitting this or hitting that. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mm. do anything for you. Um, there's just other things in the pipeline. What sort of things in the pipeline? Even more, Even of, more these. of these. Even so, more of these. You know, I think that battery might be about to run out in a second. Battery's about it's to flash go. So, so we'll yeah. probably, it's like, been a long one. It's probably like an hour at least, that one, isn't it? How long has it been? A bit long. Hour, I reckon. 53. Oh, wow. No one's, no one's watching now. Don't blame you for not watching that one. But... No. Um, yeah, so there you go. And, and but look, I hope hopefully it's a good insight. Uh, hopefully, I don't know. You tell us. Maybe this is the maybe this is your favourite video we've ever done. But um, it's good to know the the sort of the, the peak behind the curtain, isn't it? You know, there you the go. man behind the suit. Yeah, not wearing a suit, but yeah. Uh, what is it? The the balls beneath the knickers. Yeah, and and it is that case these days. I think we well, exactly. You can't say that these days. Well, you can. Because oh. why wouldn't there be testicles in knickers? There could be. There should be. Don't there probably should be, actually. Yeah. There you go. Now. I've always said that. Always said that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, let us know if you enjoyed it, because that'd be nice. Otherwise, we just wasted 50, 53 minutes of our life. Yeah. Never mind. Like it. Well, they've wasted it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They've yeah, wasted they, it. You wasted like it. Like it and all that stuff. Um, all, all that. Bottle flip. Yeah, whatever it is. In a bit. Um, yeah, bye.